Aliens hire a human as an engineer on their spaceship, thinking they're completely harmless. They are quickly proven wrong. Captain Vaxil smirked in satisfaction. This was by far the easiest bit of piracy he'd ever engaged in. He and his crew had boarded the Shunan vessel in a surprise attack, latching onto their hull with a stealth breaching pod and taking control of the bridge with barely a shot fired. The whole thing had been over in minutes. These Shunan truly were a pathetic bunch, total pacifists, through and through. The poor fools didn't even carry weapons to defend themselves. And now their captain knelt before him, twitching his whiskers in concern, begging for the life of his crew. Please, sir, said the diminutive Shunan leader. The fur on his forehead was matted with blood where he'd been struck with the butt of a pirate's gun. We are a simple mining expedition. We are unarmed, as you can see. Take what you want from our hold and let us go in peace. Vaxil smiled. But of course, he said, his voice oily with false concern. He looked around the room, spreading his forearms expansively. My crew and I are reasonable pirates, aren't we, lads? There were a few chuckles from the gathered pirate crew. They knew where this was going. Here's what we'll do, said Vaxil. You and your friends can wait in the airlock. We'll lock you in there, to keep you safely out of harm's way, you see, while my men and I take full inventory of your fine vessel. And then, when we're done here, we'll activate your emergency beacon and leave. He smiled magnanimously down at the cowering feline. Your people's reputation is well known. There's no reason this has to end in bloodshed. What do you say? The Shanann captain's ear flicked nervously. You... you give your word? He asked. You will leave once you have what you came for? Captain Vaxil's smile widened further at the naive hope in his captive's eyes. I do, he said. He watched as the Shunan crew members filed peacefully out of the bridge, huddled together under the watchful eyes of their pirate guards. When they were gone, he shook his head in disbelief. He turned to his second in command. Once they're all inside, he said, space the lot. The other pirate grinned, snapping off a quick salute. Yes, sir. Vaxil turned to a nearby console, idly perusing the contents of his latest heist. These Shunan had been busy little miners, it seemed. With the xenolite ore inside this ship, he and his men would live like kings for the next few months. He called up the proximity scanners, noting with satisfaction that his crew's ship was now holding position a short distance from the Shunan vessel. Once they got rid of the pesky Shunan, they could extend a docking tunnel and unload the crates right into... He was interrupted by a confused voice on his communicator. Uh, Captain, it said, we've got a problem. Vaxil rolled his eyes. What is it? We herded the Shunan into the airlock, like you said. But now the controls are dead. We can't open the inner or outer doors. Vaxil could practically hear the other man's shrug. They're just stuck in their cap. Can't space them, can't get them out. What should we do? Vaxil frowned, tapping a few commands on the console. Then he laughed. Well, pluck my spines. It looks like one of these mewling little furballs had the audacity to doubt our generous offer. He raised his wrist communicator, issuing a lazy order. Dracor, come in. Someone's still in the engineering bay. Head down there and restore power to the airlock doors, would you? And bring me whoever turns out to be responsible for this while you're at it. Alive, if you can. He flexed a clawed hand eagerly. I could use a little fun. Aye, Captain. Vaxil watched as a small red dot made its way along the display, eventually arriving at the doors to the engineering bay. Whatever this brave Shunan rebel had hoped to achieve, they were about to regret it for the rest of their very short life. Entering the engineering bay now, came Dracor's voice over the communicator. Damn, lights are out. They're pacifists, Drac, said Vaxil. The poor thing's probably hiding under a table somewhere. Just fix the damn power and drag them back up here when you're done. Got it, confirmed Dracor. Wait. 
There they are. There was a loud thump, followed by the sound of two people struggling. Skulls, it's not a Shunan, it's, it's a Terran. They've got a God's damned Terran in the- The communicator's volume maxed out into static as Dracor let loose an agonizing scream, which was cut short by a horrible, grinding, squelching sound. The noise went on for several seconds after the screaming stopped. Then, silence. Dracor, report! Dracor, what's going on down there? There was a brief fumbling noise as someone picked up Dracor's wrist communicator. Then a new voice joined the channel. Sorry about your friend, the man said. Seems he ran right into a mining drill, stumbling around in the dark. Nasty way to go. Vaxel ground his teeth, seething. Unknown Terran, identify yourself. What the skulls are you doing on a Shunan ship? The Terran chuckled. I know, he said. Doesn't make much sense, does it? The Shunan are peaceful little guys. Don't normally fly with other species since we're all, you know, violent. Switching channels, Vaxil barked out a quick order. Team three, get down to the engineering bay now. Kill the Terran on sight. Then, switching back to the previous band, he forced himself to speak calmly. I admit, he said, smoothing his spines back into place with two hands. This is a bit of a surprise. Tell me, how did you convince them to let you on board? Ah, that's the thing, isn't it, the Terran said. The Shunan, they aren't so good with lying. Don't seem to have the knack for it. He snorted. They really thought you were going to let them go, didn't they? Vaxil laughed despite himself. Well, You've got me there. They are a shockingly trusting species, aren't they? It's a wonder they survived this long. His eyes stayed on the console as he spoke, watching the red dots as four of his crew carefully approached the door to the engineering bay. So, what did you tell them? The truth, sort of, said the Terran. I needed to get off planet in a hurry, and they needed an engineer so I told them I was a pacifist, like them, that I'd renounced Terra's history of war and wanted to learn to live like the Shunan do. You know, peaceful-like. Vaxil licked his lips as the red dots inched closer to the door. Then, over the open channel, he heard the distinct sound of an energy rifle powering up. His eyes widened. No, stop, he yelled. Team three, it's a trap. He's got Dracor's... There was a sudden burst of gunfire. On the console, four red dots turned black. On the bridge, Vaxil slammed a fist on the console in frustration. Gods damn you, Terran, he shouted. You think you've won? You think your heroics have accomplished anything? I've got 30 men on board. Well, said the Terran, 25 now by my count. Vaxil gritted his teeth. Yes, very cute. The point is, you're hopelessly outgunned and trapped in that one room. You can't possibly hope to hold out down there forever. I don't know about that, said the Terran. I've got quite a few mining charges down here. Your boys try to rush me. They're going to find out real quick what an asteroid buster can do at close range. There was a long sigh as the Terran relaxed into his chair. Besides, he said, I don't have to last forever. This ship was scheduled to arrive in port a few hours from now. Someone's bound to come looking, sooner or later. Vaxil called up the Shunan vessel's manifest, his eyes narrowing. He cursed. So, he said, a stalemate then. That's the way I see it. The pirate captain laughed. You're brave. I'll give you that. He tapped the console again, selected the close-range scanners and smirked but you're forgetting one thing. What's that? Vaxil lifted his wrist communicator, savoring the moment. You are forgetting, he said, that I have a Tridian raider parked off your rimward bow. There was a moment of silence as the Terran absorbed the news. Vaxil smiled a vicious little smile. Did you really think we came all this was in a breaching pod? Alone? He chuckled. My ship has a weapons lock on this vessel. If you don't hand over the Xenolite, 
We'll abandon this pathetic little miner and reduce you and your crew to God's damn scrap before we leave. Seems like a waste, said the Terran. What about the loot? Consider it fair payment for the crew you killed, growled Vaxil. The pirate watched the small square labeled Engineering Bay, waiting for a response. Well, he said at last, what's your plan, hero? The Terran didn't respond for some time. Then, when Vaxil had almost decided he'd need to send in another wave of troops after all. Okay, said a tired voice over the communicator. I'll leave. Vaxil clapped two hands in satisfaction. Excellent, he said. I knew we could come to an understanding. I can reach the escape pods from here, said the Terran. If I launch, you promise to let me go? Vaxil laughed. Oh, come now, he said. I think we're far past trusting each other at this point. But if there's one thing these Shunan cowards do well, it's evasive AI. If I were a gambling man, I'd say one of their pods has a fair chance of getting out of here alive. He paused, letting the other man's situation sink in. Besides, he said eventually, what choice do you have? Fair enough, said the Terran. Dracor's communicator clicked off. Instantly, Vaxel hailed his ship. Gremel, come in, he barked. We've got a troublemaker on board trying to make a run for it. Calculate all likely trajectories for a Shunan escape pod and be ready to fire the second he's in the open. A hey, Captain! Vaxil waited, his eyes on the console before him. Beneath his feet, he felt the rumble of an escape pod decoupling from the Shunan ship. He smiled. Goodbye, little Terran, he said. A light blinked to life on the console. Got you, cried the captain, but then he frowned. Another light blinked on, then two, then a dozen more, each launched in a different direction, rocketing away from the Shunan vessel and streaking out into space. Vaxel laughed. Oh, very smart, he said. He raised his communicator. Gremel, he's launching every lifeboat they've got, Shoot down as many as you can and focus on the pods closest to the engineering bay. Do not let him escape. On it, confirmed Gremel. The Tredian raider opened fire, its heavy rail guns ripping into the first of the escape pods as it targeted them one after another. But then, seconds later. Wait, what the hell are they? As Vaxil watched in horror, every single Shunan escape pod changed course at once their evasive maneuvers jerking them back and forth through space, dancing wildly to avoid incoming fire. They arced away from the Shunan ship and circled back the way they'd come. Their thrusters burning at full power, they were clearly no longer headed away from the Tridian vessel. Now, they were headed directly towards it. Fire everything, he heard Gremel scream. There's too many, we can't stop them all. Brace for impact, brace for imp- the line went dead as the swarm of pods made impact, tearing the Tridian ship apart. Vaxil stared at the screen in shock. Where his ship had once stood, a cloud of debris now floated off their rimward bow. His communicator crackled to life once more. It was a decent offer, said the Terran. But the thing is, I've grown kind of fond of the fuzzy little guys. So if you don't mind, I figured I'd stick around for a while, see how this plays out. Vaxil clenched his fists in fury. When he could finally speak again, his voice was an angry hiss. When I find you, Terran, I'm going to rip you limb from limb with my bare hands. The Shunan crew huddled fearfully in the airlock of their ship, listening to the carnage that played out over the next few hours. Whatever unexpected enemy the pirates were fighting, it wasn't going well. Explosions rattled the ship's darkened corridors. Screams of pain echoed through the air vents. The battle raged all throughout the Shunan vessel, sometimes little more than a distant rumble, until it reached its climax in the hallway just beyond the airlock doors. The peaceful felines cowered, eyes wide, petrified by the sounds of violence taking place outside their makeshift prison. Then, with a final blood-curdling scream that shook them to their core, the ship fell blessedly silent. A thump sounded from the interior doors. Someone or something was trying to get inside. 
The captain stood, placing his own small body between his crew and whatever monster was about to enter. But when the door slid open, his jaw dropped in surprise. Marcus, he asked. The Terran was covered in blood. In his right hand, he carried a Tritian blaster, still white hot from heavy use. His left arm hung limply at his side, slashed and bleeding, and his eyes held an expression that the Shunan captain hoped to never see again for as long as he lived. Hey, Cap, said the Terran engineer. The Shunan crew filed out of the airlock and back into their ship, whispering uncertainly among themselves. The hall beyond was filled with mangled bodies. The walls were blackened with blaster fire. And mere feet from the airlock itself, in a pool of orange blood, the pirate captain, Vaxil, was sprawled out on the floor. The Shunan captain turned to his engineer, a look of horror on his face. What happened? he asked. Marcus sighed, letting the gun drop to the floor and wiping blood from his face with his uninjured hand. They were gonna space you, he said grimly. Couldn't let that stand. The captain looked at the bodies again, then back to his newest crewman. He swallowed nervously. You did all this? he asked. Afraid so, said the Terran. He shrugged, wincing at the pain in his shoulder. I, he paused and sighed again. I may not have been entirely honest with you about why I needed that ride. The captain nodded slowly. Then, snapping out of his daze, he turned to address his crew. Franzen, Mowgli, head down to engineering. The rest of you, see what you can do to get us up and running. We're still hours from Blackwell Station, and we've got a deadline to make. The crew stared at him blankly until he clapped his paws in exasperation. Come on, he called, get moving. Slowly, as if waking from a dream, the traumatized Shunan wandered back to their stations. The captain and the Terran remained where they were, facing each other in the blood-soaked hall. So, the Terran said eventually, I assume this means I'm out of a job. The Shunan seemed as if he was about to speak, then stopped himself. He looked down at his feet. I'm sorry, he said softly. We owe you our lives, and I will always be grateful for what you've done here. But my crew, they'd never accept a killer as our engineer. It's not our way. The Terran smiled sadly. It's okay, Cap. I understand. He turned and began to limp painfully down the hall. Just drop me off at the next port and you folks will never see me again. I promise. The Shunan watched him go, considering. Then he looked away, studying the scorch marks on the nearby wall. Finally, he spoke. Wait, he said, there may be another option. The Terran stopped, turning back. Oh? The little captain continued to stare at the wall, avoiding eye contact. The outer systems grow more dangerous every year, he said. If my people are to survive, it may be time to reconsider some of our older beliefs. He turned back to the Terran, his whiskers twitching in a small smile. Tell me, how would you feel about becoming our head of security?